and have truths. And one of the ways we can strike a blow for freedom is by telling, particularly our kids, telling them the truth. Uh, my granddaughter, when she was doing high school, they start talking about Columbus. She can have a whole lot to tell them about Columbus. <laughs> you know? In fact, when she go back to school next week, she'll know some more about Marcus Gar Garvey and about uh, uh, George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver didn't just discover the uh, things in the peanut. George Washington Carver, when he was through, the South had 300 more industrial plant uh, 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 products than they had before he was born. And then, in true spirit, when he died, he willed all that stuff to the people of the United States. Wow. Shem, Sem in the Hebrew, SM, Sem in the Kemetic, ancestors of the Semitic peoples whom the Egyptians first encountered as the nomadic shepherds. Sem meets traveler, wanderer, or nomad. The same thing that's meant by the word haribu. And by the way, Dr. Finch also goes into it in an earlier chapter where he explains that the Semites, people that we associate being white Jews, of course we know now that the white Jews are converts. Something most white Jews don't know. I did the Kathy Hughes program a number of years ago and um, Kathy told me a Jewish friend of hers called her up and said that my program has sent chills down his back, down his spine. Because I said that if you don't know who you are, that's dangerous. You can die if you don't know who you really are. That had a number of those Jews, European Jews knew they were not lineal Jews. It would have been a real good time to tell Hitler before he burned them up. You can get so wrapped up into something, you don't know who you are. He said, send chills down his back. Because he said he realized I was absolutely right. They, there's a possibility they could have been saved if they had known their origin. They did not know their origin. They did not know that their ancestors had converted to Judaism in the year 700. Some of them, even though it doesn't make much See, we have a whole system of lies we've been told. I grew up in the Baptist church. When I grew up in the Baptist church, the angels was white, Jesus was white, God's white, Mary's white. So it didn't seem strange to me that the Jews are white. Now, they also told me that Moses' mama had put him in a little basket of bulrushes and float him down the water. And that the Pharaoh's daughter or wife or somebody had plucked him out the water and raised him as home. Now, that would be a real new kind of dumbness. Because at the same time, they'll tell me the Egyptians are black. So how would, you know, a black woman, or a colored woman, they didn't say black, she was colored. How would a colored woman take a little white baby and raise him as hers and nobody know? But see, the system is such, the system is such that you don't ask any questions. You just accept stuff that don't make any sense, and you never ask any questions about it. Now I know why Moses' mama, if that, if anything like that ever happened, now I know why she would put him in the, in the water, head down to Pharaoh's house, because they was all the same color. See, if the police was after you and you was dumb enough to run to Potomac, Maryland, rather than Southeast. <laughs> you know? I mean, poor Terrence Johnson tried to rob a bank. Where you go? Western Maryland. How many Negroes in Western Maryland? How many Negroes in Western Maryland in the summertime wearing a heavy old winter coat? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He must have wanted to commit suicide. <laughs> because that was stupid. See? So now I know, now the story makes sense. Because if the Egyptians were colored, if the Hebrews were colored, if Moses were colored, that's all the same thing. But we were not given the right story. And in the context it was given to us, we were not taught to think about it. So the stuff doesn't make any sense.
Yepeth or Yapet, um, Yapet in the Kemetic. It's considered the ancestor of the Indo European people, one of the uh, three sons of Noah. Um, Yapet in the, in the, in the uh, in Egyptian means, Yah means islands, Pet means heaven situated around the North Pole. Yapet thus, thus means islands of heaven or the islands of the north. And I don't really have any idea where heaven is, but I never had it associated in my mind with being south. <laughs> Ishmael, Ishmael, Yismir in the Kemetic, the son conceived by Abraham through Hagar, causing her affliction through Sarah's jealousy, the ancestor of the Arabs. Ys means place, M-A-I-R means affliction. Yasmi is thus the place of affliction. Which also says what the Hebrews think about the Arabs. Here's one. Abraham. Abram. Abraim. Abraham. In the Kemetic. He's the first patriarch of the branch of Semites that includes both the Hebrews and the Arabs. After stay in Egypt, he established the circumcision as the sign of covenant with God. Now, that's what the Bible says. I now know that circumcision comes out of Af Africa before the Hebrews. Um, I'm talking now about male circumcision. I'm not talking about female circumcision. I'm not talking about female genital mutilation. That's an Arab custom that came into Africa with Islam has nothing to do with traditional African society. That's important because you see articles today and folks be talking on television about those crude Africans over there, you know, doing uh, female circumcision. Once again, you can say, you can give them the origin of how that got into Africa. Um, ab means desire or will. Ra, of course, is the Egyptian sun god. The same person that we are giving honor to when we say hoorah, you know, I'm sure, you know, that's, uh, that's an older term now. We don't quite say hoorah these days. Used to when I was coming up. Um, uh, hooray. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure some, some folks last night when George Mason won was saying something like that, you know, uh, not recognizing that they're asking Ra to continue to bless the team that they're in favor of. Uh, Im means fire or light. Hem means servant. So Abraham is the desire for the light of Ra. Abraham is the servant of the will of Ra. And that's in fact what Abraham is supposed to be doing. He was the person who the Bible says decided he's going to serve the will of God. Israel. Uh, Doc, the celebration, the exclamation that people, African Americans use to celebrate now is more uh, make a bark like a dog. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So where that came from, I don't know. Well, I, I can tell you where it came from, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> no, it started with one of our fraternities, Omega Sci Fi. Q dogs. The Q dogs, yes. Omega dogs, yeah. Oh, okay. Now, that's not, now that's, not, that's not the music of a good arrival. No, it's not. <laughs> no, actually, no, really, 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 it's not. It's not. It's, it's a, it signifies a problem they have because. Uh, I know, you know, Omega Psi Phi is a graduate organization. It's a very, very fine organization, uh, as are all the fraternities. Um, however, they've got a real problem because at the undergraduate level, they have this Q dog image. And uh, it takes them a long time to, to transform the Q dog mentality into that of an upstanding Omega. Um, we now have members of my fraternity barking. And what I have to, with the paint, have the face painted black, uh, gold, uh, blue, and I have white. And I have to remind them that that is not their theology. That our theology of blue and white, the heavenly colors. I've seen uh, members of Phi Beta Sigma with uh, sweatshirts on, old, of a caveman, big muscular caveman, mal big old club in his hand, one foot on the head of some capitals, omegas, and alphas. Other, you know, uh, and the other, uh, I guess we probably got Omega and Kappa on this side, stand on the Alpha on this side. And I say, that's, you know, oh, it says, sons of fire and brimstone. 
And I have to remind them that that's not our theology. That that's the object they picked up from other organization. You know, that we're not sons of fire and brimstone. So we, are, we have this transfer among different organizations who have not been taught the essential nature of their own histories, adopting the history of somebody else and trying to make it theirs because it's more flashy. You know, uh, so as for that, that is not the musings of, 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 of somebody who's jealous or, or, or mad. I feel sorry for them because they have a real problem. They have a problem I don't really have, except that most of our members don't know what our theology is. I'm holding a meeting April 1st to try to tell them, <laughs> you know. Um, but I know that's, that, that, that comes from the, from the, the Q, Q bark. Yes. Well, see, black folks, we don't recognize our power. At the time during the civil rights movement, when we understood that we were the moral confidence of this country, we moved the entire country forward. You know, uh, young white guys got the pants hanging down now, trying to look, you know, rough and tough. Uh, we'll be scared if, you know, somebody come up and try to challenge them about something because they're weak, you know, because they're trying to follow our image. If we recognize we could, that we are image setters, then we could be more effective in what we do. And Dr. Dr. Jeffries, um, you, you know, the scholar, Dr. Jeffries. Yes, New York, yes. statement that um, black folks create white folks imitate. Mm -hmm. And he got in trouble for that because um, the Mayor Dinkins and all of them were going to have him for that. You know, the, well, Mayor Dinkins would have to be he's mainline establishment. Mm -hmm. I'm sure his, his Jewish backers, of course, yeah. told him, you can get out there and correct that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, you Dr. know. Jeffries got in trouble with the Jewish people up there for some other things he was saying, right? Well, he's the first one who brought, he brought the work of Sheikh onto Job out. He didn't do it in the way that I would do it. He just, um, he just, he talked about the sun people and the ice people. And of course, he was hooked up at the same time with um, Khalid Muhammad. That didn't help. Uh, the <laughs> Iceman Inheritance book. The Iceman hmm? Inheritance book. Yes. He also tied that in. Yeah. But he, did, he never explained. He never explained what the, what the ops work was about. You know, if you explain what the ops work is about, and folks can come to understand the cultural patterns, it's perfectly obvious. But, you know, if, if you do it just in an inflammatory way to get to the press, you know, then it doesn't do any good. Um, Jacob, can't quite see that light right there. I was trying to be creative with the colors. Jacob, Yaqub is the is the Hebrew, uh, is the younger twin of Esau. Uh, Yaqub, by the way, is the same person the Muslims talk about creating the white man. <laughs> Yaqib in the Kemetic. Um, Yah may be the diminutive of Y-A-I. Uh, which is the, another personification of Ra as the golden ass. Y'all may also be the diminutive of Y-A-H, uh, the deified moon. Q-E-B means circuit. So Yaqib may be the, either the heavenly circuit of Ra as Yah, or the moon as Toth, Khonshu, another form of, of Toth, or Osiris, which is another form of, of uh, Toth. Israel, 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 the committed, experienced the vision of the ladder upon which the heavenly host moved, wrestled with the angel, and saw the face of the Lord. Yas means place, Ra, of course, is the sun god and creator, and Ir means create. So Israel means the place that Ra created, and in fact, Israel saw itself as the nation that God created. The chosen people. Joseph, Yusuf, Yusef, or Yusep, uh, the favored son of Jacob, also known as Israel, a Hebrew form of Ra. You means to come. Why you can be also why I you, the golden ass. Sephi means child, and Sept is the name of is another name of Osiris. So On my button here. They went out. I was dying now. Okay. So Yusefi is the coming child or son. Yusefi, Y I Yusefi is the son of Y I U, the golden ass, or Osiris, the coming one. I'll do one or two more of these and down on a reach them before I close out. Moses. Moshe. 
He was carried in an ark of bulrushes as an infant. He was found in the Sea of Reeds. He becomes a type of Hebrew savior. Mu means sea or pool. Sha means reeds. S-H-A means to obtain or to draw from. So Mushe means a sea of reeds. It also means to draw from a pool of water. So we see in the names of the various characters, and these are some of the names of the various characters in the Bible, people that we've always associated in our, our lifetime with the Hebrew religion, we now have a tie that shows that we can go back all the way to Egypt and to the Kemetic language and show that the same names that we see as Hebrew come out of the Kemetic language. And of course, those names then, of course, come down to Christianity. Uh, it's a very, very important uh, book, very, very important work. Uh, I want to read just a couple of passages here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, give the microphone. Did you explain here before the meaning of golden ass? Because I don't know. It. The golden ass is, is one of the... Um, Icons, I guess I call it, that's associated with um, uh, Osiris. Um, Osiris was the male figure in, in Kemet uh, that is equivalent in our society to um, God the Father. Um, and the, the folks in Kemet at various times associated different animals with different characters. The golden ass just happened to be one they associated with uh, Osiris. Um, and of course they had a name, and the, the, that name, um, Y-I-U, I believe, refers to the, that figure, the golden ass, uh, which later comes down actually being one of the, the, um, the derivatives of where we get the name Jesus. The name, actual name Jesus actually, as best I understand it, Isus, the name that will be used tomorrow in the Catholic Mass. They still use the Latin Mass, the word Jesus. Uh, that literally means mighty Zeus. The I um, has the same function in the word Jesus as it has in the word immense. It magnifies the thing that comes behind it. And um, Zeus, of course, was the uh, deity being worshipped in Rome at the time that the person who was called Paul uh, wrote his letters. Uh, as best I understand it, Paul was trying to, Paul had a disagreement with the other disciples or the other people who were involved in beginning to spread the story that becomes the Jesus story. And um, one of the reasons he had a problem was because he never came through the tradition of Jesus. He was a Jew who had been persecuting Christians, or those who become Christians. And um, he went through a conversion himself. Um, he decided he wanted to preach. But rather than go and talk to any of the people who had been involved in the movement thus far, by his own description, he went out to the desert and made up his own stuff. And of course, the stuff he made up was, you know, a product of his, his ed education and training. He said, number one, that it was not necessary to be circumcised. That, of course, was a Hebrew rite, R-I-T-E. And so that caused problems because, you know, that's a typical thing that happens to young Jewish boys. Uh, he also said it was not necessary to keep the dietary laws. So he's dealing with people now in Rome, you know, who are different. Um, it wasn't necessary to keep the Sabbath laws. So little by little, as he makes his religion more and more acceptable to the, the Gentiles, it makes it more, more, less and less acceptable to the Hebrews. And they have a number of conferences and whatnot. They try to get together and get on the same page. But it finally breaks down. You go and do your own thing. You know, you, uh, what's the phrase? Um, you don't have to go home, but you got to leave out of here. <laughs> you know? So he leaves out of uh, that area, and he goes to Rome, and he develops what becomes the modern European Christian religion. Um, how did I get on that? Oh, um, I was trying to go back to Osiris. 
in, in the European conceptualization, when I was in church, when we took communion, I thought the Last Supper was something totally distinct to Jesus and his disciples. Preacher Jones never told me it went back any further than that. Of course, he knew a thing about Jews, even though Jesus was supposed to be a Jew. He might not have known that. But at any rate, um, <laughs> had he known something about Jews, he would have recognized the fact that what's called the Last Supper was the dinner before the Sabbath. Not Sunday, before the Sabbath. The Hebrews had a number of different Sabbaths, of which Saturday in this area is one of them. This was a special Sabbath before Passover. And at the pre-Sabbath Seder, um, they used implements of bread and wine because the Jews, ever since their quote-unquote quote, escape from Egypt, had used implements of bread and wine to, to signify their escape from Egypt. Now, Pastor Jones also did not know about Egypt. Had he known about Egypt, he would have recognized the fact that in Egypt, Osiris, the same person who's portrayed as the golden ass, Osiris was also seen as the protector of the barley fields and the grapevines. And in the ceremony giving honor to Osiris, Europeans call it Assyrian worship, but I like to say veneration instead. Uh, in that veneration cycle, they used implements of bread and wine to signify Osiris because the wine is the fruit of the grape, the child of the grape, and bread is the child of the barley fields, of the grain. So here we have a ceremony, the use of bread and wine, that originates, as far as doing at this time, in Egypt. Could go back in the further in Africa, for we know. That work has not been done yet. But here's a ceremony, starts in Egypt, use of bread and wine. Once again, the folks who are Hebrews see that and do that while they're there. Once they separate themselves, they've got to give themselves a reason to keep on doing what they're doing. We eat black eyed peas and fatback sometime at New Year's. Now, that's all our folks had. We can buy porterhouse steak. But we still eat black eyed peas and, and fatback on New Year's Eve, some chitlins, mm -hmm. to remind ourselves of how things used to be. Hebrews did the same thing. They gave the use of bread and wine a different meaning. When the Christian church comes in, it's trying to hide its connection to Judaism in terms of where its ceremonies come from because they, they want to be unique in terms of Jesus. So they taught me that Jesus organized the Last Supper like that was a brand new thing. Now I know, because I'm more intelligent now than I was then, that last night, Friday night, observant Jews right here in Washington, D.C. had a Seder and used bread and wine and all the other things that they used in that ceremony as they've been doing for thousands of years. So there's a connection between all of these things. I only knew one third of the picture that time. Now I know more of the whole picture. Uh, so Osiris was the, was the figure of God that we see today as God the Father. Isis was, was the mother figure of God. Heru or Horus was the son of God. Kaaba? He's not, he's not recording now, though. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, just, just in, uh, what, page 192. 192? Um, the first real paragraph pretty much summarizes, you know, the whole golden aspect in the volume. Uh, the solar character of Easter week is also revealed in Palm Sunday celebration. Palm Sunday commemorates the ascent of Jesus into Jerusalem on the back of an ass, his waist strewn with palm branches in preparation for the Passover feast. This procession into Jerusalem admits of a threefold interpretation. One, it identifies Jesus with the Egyptian Ra'yu or Yus uh, Yusa, who as the golden ass is one of the zoo types of the sun. One of the zodiac, yes. Two, it evokes the pre mosaic worship of Ra'yu by the ancestors of the Israelites. We just talked about that, and dealing with ancestors and certain things that they did. And three, it sim symbolizes the power of Jesus over Satan, who in its original set form was ideographed as an ass 
Among the ancient Egyptians, the palm branch was regarded as a time symbol, and this bifurcated leaf represented the equinox with its equal demarcation of day and night. The Palm Sunday procession therefore symbolizes Jesus the Son in the form of Rayu preparing to pass over or cross the celestial, the celestial equator on its ecliptic ascent at the equinox. And that's why Passover occurs within a few days of Easter, because the equator, if you project the equator out into the atmosphere, that's called celestial equator. The sun rises higher and higher every day from December 25th to, um, to June the 20th. And at the, equi at the time of the equinox, it actually crosses that extension line, forming a cross in the sky. I'm going over that because you haven't been, been here before. That's ex will explain to you why you've never seen a ceremony, Easter ceremony, from Calvary. Think about it. Once again, it doesn't occur to most Christians, if Calvary is a place on earth, it would seem that everybody would want to locate that. That'd be the perfect place each Sunday morning, have sunrise service. I mean, you know, the Pope and Jerry Falwell and Jesse Jackson, they'd be knocking each other out the way, trying to be on top of the hill. You've never seen a path, seen an Easter service from Calvary because Calvary does not exist on the earth. Calvary is a place in the sky. It's the place where the celestial equator crosses the path of the sun as it rises from its low point to its high point. It's the point where the sun passes over that line. Or, as we see it visually, it kind of hangs there for a period. It's, it crucifies or is crucified on celestial cross. Calvary comes from the word calvarum. The uh, ancients saw the, the sky as being like a skull cap. And the uh, Latin word for skull is, is calvarum. The anglicized, the English version of that is calvary. The Greek word for skull is golgotha. So we could say that at Easter time, the sun, S-U-N, S-O-N, crossifies or passes over the celestial equator and is, hangs on the cross at, at Calvary or Golgotha. See, once again, it's mythology that we take as being actuality. When in fact, there's meaning behind the myth. And, and Doc, to, to me, and I heard you say that years ago, and, and, and I thought about why that was, symbolically and spiritually. And to me, and to me, the, that, that light on that skull is that light in, that light bulb in your head? I mean, mm -hmm. that's 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 the Christ mind that mm -hmm. what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. That's the enlightenment, mm -hmm. you know, going into you, into your brain. That's mm -hmm. that's what that represents. Mm -hmm. And our ancestors, in their brilliance, saw that, and were able to come up with these myths to to delineate those those very things. Yeah. And despite the fact that you may go through trials and tribulations, good times and bad times, they saw a connection between the springtime of the season and the renewing of your spirit. So that's, that's why I said before that many Christians, a couple Sundays from now, will sit there each Sunday morning and not realize that they are resurrected with Christ. They'll get half the message, they'll miss the most important part of the message. They won't see the connection with themselves. Okay? Um, they'll recognize the God outside of them. That's the European view. They will not recognize the God, recognize the God inside of them. That's the African view. Um, there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, that was out of the chapter Osiris, Egyptian funerary ritual, and the birth of Christianity. Um, there was um, at the time that the sun rises on December 25th. What sign does it rise out of? Sign of Capricorn. What's, what's, what symbol is Capricorn? A goat, okay. What kind of uh, feet does the uh, goat have? Cloven hoofs. Okay, so now let's look about this. On December 25th, the sun, which is the minister's lowest point, its weakest strength, is at the lowest point in the zodiac. It's in Capricorn, the darkest place. And it rises out of that dark place, be born again. Maybe that's why Satan 
is portrayed as having cloven hoofs. Because Capricorn, the goat, has cloven hoofs. And the root of the planet is also um, Saturn. Saturn. Is Saturn the root ruling yeah. planet of, of Saturn, Capricorn? Right, of Capricorn okay. and uh, Quirin. Has, uh, Saturn has two ruling planets, uh, Saturn and Uranus. Okay. And it rises up into an area where it's now in conjunction with Aries, the the ram, ram, lamb, and Taurus, the bull, in the area of the sky called the stable. So we can say at Christmas time, Christ is born in a stable. Um, the, uh, in September, September 20th, the star Sirius rises. And three stars in the belt of Orion, which for years have been known as the Three Kings, point directly at Sirius. And a Sirius moves through the sky between September 20th and December 20th. Those three stars seem to be falling right along with it. We three kings of Orient, sorry, Orient are, you know, uh, again, uh, uh, Christmas carol we sing, but don't understand. Sirius is called what? What kind of star? The dog star. The dog star. What do dogs do? They bark. They alert you something's coming. Sirius comes to stand on December 25th at the exact spot where the sun's going to rise. It alerts you to the fact that something's going to happen right there. Mm. See, all these things are tied together. Um, last week I talked about the fact that the ancients said that at, at the equinox, March 20th, Father Son impregnated Mother Earth. What's the sign of the equinox? March, March 20th. Who's born around March 20th? Anybody in here? Pisces. What's the symbol of Pisces? Two fish. Okay, now. If, I also told you last week, you, some of you already know this, that the, the moon waxes 14 days and wanes 14 days. 28 day cycle. The female cycle is identical to that. Now, in the female, eggs produced in the first 14 days is released. It becomes fertilized, something happens. If it's not fertilized, it's disposed of. If it's fertilized, it takes exactly 10 times 28 days for the baby to be born. We generally say nine months, but doctors know it's 280 days. That's how come they give you that day. Okay, now, if we, if we take the date of impregnation as March the 20th, June the 20th is the end of the first trimester. September 20th is the end of the second trimester or the beginning of the third trimester. What happens in the female beginning of the third trimester? Baby starts moving down. Okay? What's the symbol of, the third, of, of uh, September 20th? Virgo. Okay? What does Virgo have in her, in her hands? That's, that's Libra. Wheat. Shaft of wheat. How many stalks 